Hello, uh, it's Josh here from racingtoprofit.co.uk. Um, hopefully you can see me in the bottom right hand corner. Um, I know most of you know what I look like and sound like by now. Um, this very moment I've just walked in, or I say very moment, about 15 minutes ago, um, back to Liverpool, having got the train a nice four hours from uh, sunny Suffolk. Um, and yeah back on it ready to go uh, i thought i hadn't really recorded a video for a while um apologies if i uh, sound or look a bit uh kind of sleepy at any time uh, i still don't think i've recovered from um four boozy days in prague uh, which were good fun um so yeah i thought i would record another video um i was going to do a horse race base one actually uh looking at a couple of trainers um, but as you can probably see in front of you uh, this is a ggs.co.uk uh, based video um, which I was going to do in a few weeks actually um, and just kind of show you through how I use it um, kind of to formulate some of the blog content I suppose um, but I came across the site a couple of days ago and you can see exactly what I saw in front of me um, about the GG's gold subscriptions uh, for new members will rise on the 1st of June. I think they're rising to about 30 quid um, from 24. Uh, but in any case, my the purpose of this video uh, is not to kind of do a hard sell. This is why you should get it. Um, although I think everyone should try it. Um, but more to show you how I use it. Uh, on a daily basis um, in a kind of very real practical sense um, because that along with horse race base are the only two tools that I uh, and websites I suppose that I use um, to any great extent um, so I thought that would help and I thought I would uh, do it or kind of record this video formulating the stats angles of interest part of um, tomorrow's blog post so I'm speaking at quarter past two um, on Wednesday the 25th um, and yeah I'm gonna go and look at it cold pretty much uh, I haven't looked through tomorrow's cards at all I haven't looked through any of the stats um, as you know I changed the approach uh, a few days ago or last week uh, I suppose a bit more holistic I think I started in terms of I should ex I should say in terms of for the stats angles of interest section of the blog um, which has always been a bit testy uh, as I've said before um, and the the aim I suppose before I was kind of starting with stats and going that way around but now using the GG's cards I start a different way around looking at the horses in relation to uh, other races and their handicap mark in relation to other horses um, who they're up against I should say and their profile for race conditions um, and all this will become clear in a moment when I show you so I'm on the home page I think I'm logged in uh, so I'm going to go to race cards there's kind of two bits well there's many parts of Gigi's gold including tips um, and the very successful stat of the day which has had a bit of a bumpy ride in 2016 um, but seems to be back in form and the one tip a day six days a week for that has averaged between 80 and 100 points a year since it started um, and at five pounds uh, per bet that has more than covered subscriptions and left a bit over for some beer or even a nice weekend away um, but I'm not going to focus on that I'm going to focus on the race cards um, now my computer is progressively getting slower or I should say regressively maybe um, and with this recording equipment it seems to make it even worse uh, so bear with me um, right so that's today's cards um, and I know many of you this may be familiar uh, to you um, hopefully you find it useful um, in terms of to get an idea of my own approach not you know separate from um, looking at the benefits of uh, what GG's has to offer um, uh, but anyway so yeah we're on Wednesday this has kind of the one that's flashing is the next race so yeah 16 minutes past two now so next race is 220 at Lingfield um, I'm going to click up here in the kind of top left hand corner uh, to the Thursday the 26th now um, obviously the weather can change in various different things uh, so the first thing to point out uh, is you can change the going for any meeting uh, to anything you want and you can change it any time of the day and that will affect the going uh, filters uh, for all the other race cards that follow um, 
we can see what have we got three four five six meetings tomorrow um i'll kind of leave newcastle because it's it's new uh and it's kind of a bit hard to compare i think although we could have a flick through um chelmsford i'm not big i'm not big on the all weather um mainly that's because i think i'm not very good at it or haven't seemed to have had much success i know some of you finer judges out there in the readership um seem to do better than i do uh, on the sand uh, isn't something i've quite got my head round as yet um but let's start with haydock and i haven't checked the weather um so who knows uh, and then in any case it's haydock they're saying good it may well be heavy <laughs> um given their uh, different approach to giving uh, going readings um, so the first thing I suppose uh, so this is a two o'clock novice auction stake so I'm I'm looking at this and I'm talking uh, about it as I think and uh, as I have my own approach in terms of for formulating uh, that particular aspect of the blog the stats angles of interest section um, and it's very much recorded with those eyes on, so to speak. Um, so we've got a novice auction stakes race. Uh, there are a lot more of these this year, um, as an aside, uh, as I think it was Richard posted a very good comment on the blog the other um, week, and it passed me by a bit in terms of changes to British racing. Uh, they've kind of done away with, I think, 85, 90% of maiden races um, and replaced them with the novice auction stakes, uh, which I think in time will allow um, winners to race in them with penalties and there's a penalty structure um, and basically stops young horses having to go straight into a kind of normal handicap I think that's the idea although I could complete, be completely wrong um, they're not races I play in unless I have a kind of real big statistical way in um, but I suppose you can see the race card there but I'm, I could look at it but I'm not going to bother um, those kind of races unless I've got stats as I said starting out um, I won't really bother with then we've got a maidens maiden Philly stakes race again that isn't something I really care for so I'm skipping past that um, you know this video might be shorter than one of my usual kind of three hour jobs um, as we all hold our breath uh, and hope that's the case uh, what have we got right here we go 15 runner handicap three o'clock at Haydock um, so the first thing I want to point out, uh, what have we got? So yeah, we've got this in front of us. Um, let me go down a bit. So you've got the race details at the top, uh, kind of the ratings band for horses rated uh, 0 to 85, um, for horses aged four or older, um, and that's important. You have uh, the number obviously uh, down the race card, and you can order them how you want. You've got the draw, and again, you can click there and order it in draw. Um, uh, the age, the weight, trainer, jockey, um, and these are the interesting things. So you've got a first glance here, uh, you have these great little green um, kind of symbols which I hope you can see. Uh, Philip Prince has one up here. So if I hover, it's got a 14. Um, so that means there's five or more runs or rides in his case in the last 14 days, uh, either 20% of one or 51% I'm of placed and if I uh, so you can get a glance to see what jockeys are in form and what trainers are in really good form um, Tom Dascom has a C5 uh, so that's five plus runs at the track in the last five years with a 16% or higher win strike rate um, and I suppose if I just go back actually because it doesn't appear like any trainers are in hot form in that race um, but if I go back here so you can see uh, Mr Burke there is uh, got a 14 next to his name so that means five plus runs in the last 14 days 20% win 51% place or 51% place same with Hannon um, you've got these different icons here underneath the horse um, recent form of the horse that's obviously not going to be none because he hasn't run <laughs> um, let's look you've got the trainer form so here you go you can see um, Kieran Burke last 14 days 29 runners six of one uh, what's that 21% win strike rate pretty much rounded up um, you've got the uh, play strike rate win and play strike rate uh, and then the AE so uh, 
actual versus expected so that's uh, how they're performing against what the market expects them to do and what the market expects them to do based on the price their horses are sent off at so he's performing 39 percent above market expectations um, so that indicates that his horses in the last two weeks are running um, above form really above what they're expected to they're outrunning uh, their starting price odds um, there's the iv figure which i haven't looked into and i've uh, I really should. There's kind of help guides and everything um, within this which explain more about the different things and the IV, that's impact value I believe, um, isn't something I've looked at in too much depth but again I think that is the case of everything over 1.0 um, is a positive. Uh, so yeah you've got um, that, uh, so that's uh, an example of those. Um, so a quick glance that allows you to see if there are any trainers in form um, as I say that, uh, yes, you've got P.D. Evans is, um, David Evans is in form. Um, and, well, I should say, sorry, I'm just thinking as I stare at the screen, um, while I'm focused on that. So, yes, you've got 14-day form, 30-day form. You can see the profit loss to £1 stakes. Um, I think that's a SP or Betfair SP. Uh, course, one-year form. Uh, course five year forms this is all runners um, I mean obviously that can sometimes be misleading depending on you don't know what odds the runners have gone at um, you don't know if a load were in maidens and they were never there to win uh, as an example um, but that gives you a rough idea um, so you've got that and next um, what I'm doing initially when I'm formulating that part of the blog post is to try and find races uh, that are uncompetitive. Um, the Habri uh, for Roof Car would be an example, um, which was what the second horse put up um, with my new approach, um, who won at 16 to one uh, last week, um, is to find races where, you know, only it looks like only one or two horses um, have a chance. Now, obviously if a horse has, if a race um, it's for horses aged four and older. A lot of them will have run quite a few times. You have a good idea. I suppose I should explain a bit more now what you can see in front of your eyes. Um, so you've got the horses form on the going. Um, you can change that. So you can have, you know, it might be, uh, you know, interchangeable grounds. You might want to change the filter to look at horses form on good to firm to good. There might be good to firm spots. The ground might dry out. Um, and doing that can throw up different results. Uh, if there's a downpour, if there's a shower, you know, if suddenly Haydock it transpires after the first race that it is soft, um, they might have some rain, whatever, um, you could change that going. Uh, and you actually see not many of those, if any, have run on um, soft, it would appear. So let's just go back to good uh, for the moment. Um, so you've got that. So you can see, you can also see their record in the class, which is useful. I like to go to a class above just to see if there's a horse that have performed, you know, a higher class might be dropping down. Um, you've got their record at the track. You've got their record at the distance. Um, you've got the record in field size. That's important. Some horses um, only ever seem to do well in small fields, some only in big fields. Um, if they're kind of repeat offenders, 12 runners plus is quite a lot I like to change that 16 plus sometimes just to get a feel to see if there are any horses that are clearly demonstrated they don't like big fields and being surrounded um, or that they do it might be because they like a strong pace it might be that they're held up um, and the more runners might ensure there's a stronger pace um, and the race can set up for them etc etc um, so that's an option uh, and then I'm kind of, I'm looking, I suppose, and I'm using the colours, the reds, the greens, the, the ambers, um, to give an impression, to give, give me a feel of who might actually have a good chance in this race. Um, I kind of as an initial way in, and I'll just be noting them down. I also want to have a look at the handicap marks. So this rating to the right, um, you've got today's official rating and their last winning official rating. Um, and you've got the difference. So a minus number is bad. So so Billy Wright, his last win was off 81. Today he races off 87. Now I may want to check if he's got a claimer on board. Um, he does, doesn't he? I think Philip Prince taking off five. 
I might want to check if, uh, you know, later on, whether he is uh, an unexposed horse where the rating doesn't matter so much. Um, now, my eyes for the stats angles of interest part of this blog is very much now on trying to find horses which are well handicapped and kind of dropping back to a level so they can repeat a past performance. Um, I think that's going to be an approach which works, especially in, um, well, class four is a high enough grade, but especially in kind of class five, class six. Um, you want those horses that uh, have to have everything just right. Trainers are creatures of habit. Trainers know marks their horses win from. Uh, you know, they, they run them to get, uh, you know, to get them back down to a handicap, back down to a mark that they think they can win from. Um, they will be fully aware of kind of the marks that horses have won from before. So again, when looking at something like this, I don't want um, a kind of a race to be full of horses that are below their handicap mark necessarily. So here I'm having a look um, and I'm just scanning my eyes along. Uh, you know, Navigate looks interesting. He's one pound uh, still above his last winning mark. Um, Confessional is zero from 29 on good. Uh, zero from nine in classes three to four. Uh, Although from memory, I think he may have won at probably class two back in the day. Um, uh, you know, snapshots, good ground, no distance, six furlong, zero from six. These are just the win stats, I should say. These are their perform, their winning performance in race conditions. Um, dinner after midnight, uh, looking okay actually, but six pounds above last winning mark. Uh, Signal Piccolo. Um, that's looking okay. The track form would be a slight concern, but he's back to his last winning mark. Um, now, i am simply got a pad of paper um, and a pen, uh, and I'll just, I'm just simply noting those down um, for something that I may want to go and have a look back at. Um, so for me, because of his handicap mark, um, Signor Piccolo, uh, gets jotted. Um, I, you know, I want to have a look at the track form. Um, straight to the point, two pounds. Mass rally has been seems to be on a losing run forever. Um, Twenty-two pounds below his last winning marks. You'd think if they can find the key at some point, one of these days, um, if he hasn't totally gone at the game, he's just going to hose up, especially in a class four. Um, maybe that day uh, is tomorrow in this race. Um, and so on. Now, there's a bit of green there, there's a bit of orange that, on the kind of competitive scale, uh, that is a more competitive race, maybe, than would be ideal um, because of the performance of some of them in the class, um, because of the performance of a lot of them at the distance. Um, uh, you know, we've got, you, you know, you might want to focus on, you might be someone who likes course form and track form, and you might immediately get drawn to those. Um, who look like they do well at certain tracks. Uh, I could press the place tab here, so top left, and again, so that throws up even more kind of green and amber, suggesting that a lot of these have placed and gone very close in race conditions. Um, we can see that quite a few are well handicapped. We can see that some don't look overly handicapped, you know, a couple of pounds above the last win, a couple of pounds above the last win. Um, you know, it's a game of fine margins and that might not stop them depending on what stage of the kind of progress scale they're on and how unexposed they may be. Um, I should point out the speed rating here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I believe it's a Dr. Pete DeMay, uh, Matt kind of pays, I assume, um, to uh, pull together his speed ratings. He has a very unique way of doing it. Um, Again, but that's just more information. Uh, they can be very useful and kind of add more to the pot um, in terms of information. Um, so we've got that. Then we've got the pace. So that's the instant expert. I've got the pace tab. That's my next stage. I mean, this race is looking a bit too um, competitive for me, I think, in terms of for the approach for that part of the blog. Um, I should just have a look at who was I looking at before? Signor Piccolo. So, yeah, he's raced here four times and hasn't even placed. Um, so that would be off-putting. He may not like the track. Um, but I might need to look at that. It might be that every one of those runs here was on heavy and he's a good ground horse, etc. Um, so next, I'm just kind of... Uh, yeah, I ignored the pace there, didn't I? Um, let me go back. Uh, so we've got pace. Um, 
Right, so you've got the pace score and I click the score button here to get the kind of added up. Um, and what it does, if a horse led, so this looks at the horse's last four runs. Now if a horse led, he gets a four. Um, uh, if he was tracking the pace, he gets a three. Uh, if he was kind of in touch mid-division, he gets a two, as you can see there. Um, uh, if he's a hold-up horse, a Billy Wright, held up, held up. Um, so you can get a, a kind of idea. So I've scored it, so the four scores simply added up. Um, the higher the score, the more pace you and the more close the closer the pace it suggests the horse runs um, combining this with kind of speed figures is something I need to look at a bit more um, especially in races with kind of smaller fields kind of seven eight um, where kind of horses may find it easier to get away on the front end even more so when it's good or bet better ground um, so we can see here that snapshots uh, kind of was up there on his last run uh, confessional led uh, over one further I faded last hundred yards um, that be, might be a sign that he's starting to come back to some form um, Tim Easterby with leader uh, tall ridden over one furlong out um, so you know you can just get an idea of pace there who's going to lead who's going to be held up who it may um, kind of who it may fancy and then of course you've got the draw aspect uh, and depending on the different draw elements uh, now if I go to um, Matt's added in the last few what the last month um, these draw stats now this is a gold mine in itself um, so we've got distance this is on the ground so obviously draws can change depending on the ground if it comes up soft it might suddenly favor a different uh, side we've got 14 runners to 16 plus um, and it's interesting there you know uh, I must admit I forget what the time period is exactly for these stats um, I think it's the last couple of seasons, um, but you can see there the uh, kind of impact or the effect of, or I should say, how poorly to date um, high-drawn horses have done. Um, yeah, that's a big enough sample: 30, 60, 80, what's that? 88, uh, 94 or so horses. Um, high those drawn high zero from 28, uh, four have placed. Um, those drawn medium low seem to be the place to be. Uh, and then you can see there so you know those that are drawn 11 or higher um, have really struggled now that may be because of some freak of nature or the pace has been low or it may be there's an actual ground and track bias um, now I'm of the opinion that pace is more important generally um, if there's a lot of pace low a lot of pace high it's where that is and it's how easy other horses can get kind of taken into the race um, but as we saw at York the other day um, especially for the first day or the first day and a half um, there was a definite bias uh, low I think um, and it appears at Haydock that kind of 11 plus well 11's had three places so maybe not too bad but 12 plus it looks hard it looks really hard um, to kind of win from a draw that high um, and you know in this race with however many runners it has let's have a look uh, 15 runners being drawn on the wing um, you know so if I go back to draw uh, pace sorry I know I'm skittering around here um, if I go back to pace um, you know low's the place to be and the hooded claw is drawn low uh, straight to the point likes to chase leaders and be up there and he's got an impressive speed figure so he might track the hooded claw and might get taken into the race for example normandy bears are fine um now you know confessional uh, might struggle led headed over you know the draw stat suggests he's going to struggle being drawn this high he might get isolated the ground may simply be slower um, and he might not have any chance navigate's going to be a hold up horse on the low side that doesn't look good um well else we've got gold club uh so billy wright and um, the other thing to say is obviously the market hasn't formed yet normally when it does uh the best odds available for that horse would be uh kind of dem uh indicated here as you can see to the right uh, so that helps um and so yeah so from a pace perspective um you know straight to the point one last time out uh i think that's did he beat something i fancied um uh so that might be interesting an interesting uh, angle he's going to have snapshots and the hooded claw possibly to take him into the race he'll be close up he might be in the best place to pounce um if i go back to instant expert uh you know we're 
where is straight to the point so yeah he's down here um two pounds above his last mark he's raced three times at haydock um and he has placed once so i'm not worried about him not liking the track um Well done, computers having a um, possible meltdown. Um, yeah, no, that's still alive. Uh, hopefully you can still see me and hear me. Um, uh, straight to the point. So, I mean, that's the other thing about rating is four. Um, he's unexposed. Uh, I really don't care about his mark at this point in time, to be honest. Uh, I cannot think those two pounds are going to be the reason he doesn't win unless there's something else very, very well in um, who runs a cracker. Um, there's a step up. Uh, you know, it's from a rip in class four. Um, you've got Brian Smart. What's his record? The track could be better. And his last 15 runners haven't really fired. Um, you know, that's just an example. I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. Um, because that's quite a competitive race. So they're the kind of main aspects. You've got a maiden stakes race again. Um, again, not something uh, I'm going to look at in too much depth. Um, so I'm just looking at Hannon's. But you can see Gosden does well here in general. Appleby's in very good form. Um, uh, you know, last 14 days, four winners from the last 14 runners. 42% have placed, um, etc. Uh so that's a three thirty, but I'm not going to bet in that. Um, here we have a four o'clock, and again, I want to see if this. Uh, now, sorry, right, this is for three-year-olds only. Um, they, I don't like playing in three-year-old only handicaps. Um, they're young, they're unexposed, they're still growing. Uh, there's some of them might still be learning about the game. A lot of making handicap debuts. You don't know how much ability they've got. Just an absolute nightmare. Um, some people, I dare say, specialise in them um, and probably do quite well. Uh, I'm not one of them, so I'm moving on. <laughs> um, oh, this Haydock card, I've started with a good one, didn't we? So, so this is for Lady Amateur Riders. Um, I'm not dismissing Lady Amateur Riders there, uh, just the actual race type, I should add, um, in the sense that I don't know the riders, I don't know how competent they are, and you may be more in the luck of the gods uh, lap of the gods I should say in terms of tactics um, and everything else but some are clearly better than others but if we ignore that for the moment and just look at the horse um, so I'm just on the win stats again so good class 5 I'm having a look uh, Shalmanazar 0 from 7 class 5 I you know, had a look there the handicap mark is £6 below his last mark so he's becoming well handicapped um, Merchant of Medici clearly likes Haydock. Uh, conditions are fine, two pounds above last mark. May have something off his back here. King of Paradise, uh, okay, not too bad. Um, five pounds below last mark. Um, in general, these are poor animals, aren't they? Flag of Glory is one from 28 in the class. King of Paradise, four from 28. Edas is at three from thirty-two. You know who's going to turn up on the day? Who's in the right mood? Um, who knows? Uh, although um, King of Paradise has Serena Brotherton on, which is a good thing, and I think he likes to get on with it. And let's see if he is going to be able to get his own way. Um, probably. So there's only two horses in this race who have. Uh, liked to get on with it um the yank uh and king of paradise king of paradise really does like to get on with it and he probably breaks well um the yank is also coming here after 189 days hopefully he might be rusty and kind of fall out the stalls um and in any case uh maybe paced outpaced possibly um given i think he may need further uh, and David Bridgewater uh, uh, just getting back into some form after a quiet period. Um, Eric Alston, he's well, he's zero from thirteen, but the place percentage is okay. Um, so King of Paradise, uh, I would go back and check in terms of, you know, he could just be an out of form horse, um, but he's down to a good mark. 
uh, that was a class four this is a class five um, we'll see that that might be an interesting pace angle um, and he may be worthy of some closer inspection um, uh, so that's uh, that um, what am I going to do next uh, well let's go to Sandown and have a flick through there um, I'm sure this video will go on but hopefully you can dip into bits um, and I'm trying to hold your attention uh, so again uh, there's a Sandown card for the 6 o'clock uh, 4 year old plus handicap uh, what trainers are in form? Ed Dunlop hasn't you know, has been in form, decent form for a while. Um, but he's only one from 42 at the track. Uh, no one else seems to be in great form. Um, I'm, again, I'm seeing if there's an uncompetitive, if this is uncompetitive, I should say. Um, that looks like as quite a few horses could be given chances. Um, and the key with this approach, I suppose, and something I need to get better at with the, the stats section, is to be disciplined and to wait for those horses to come to you uh, and to smack you in the face in terms of looking like they have a great chance um, in terms of the, against race conditions and other horses in the race not being suited to race conditions. Um, there are quite a few in here. Uh, well, there's four that look fine on the ground. Many that have a decent record at the class. Many, if not nearly all, bar one, are distance winners. Um, a lot of them are close to their last marks. Um, that may be a race uh, that I want to leave well alone. Um, just because it looks like, at a first glance, you could make a case for quite a few. Um, Having said that, there are a lot of hold-up horses, as we can see, uh, and Dunlops likes to make all, and he's got SDS on his back, and he's just a brilliant jockey, um, although he's won his last two, so I can't think it's going to be much of a price, uh, but that looks likely, as a, you know, that way in, looks like he could be able to dictate, um, provided the Clifford Lions horse doesn't mess him around, um, and if so then he may be a danger to all to get up his hat trick um, what have we got here we've got a listed race um, again this is for two year olds so there isn't going to be much form to go on uh, this is the kind of thing where my trainer track uh, profile guide um, a smooth plug there uh, <laughs> uh, may be coming handy in terms of looking at a trainer's record with listed um, group runners uh, at Sandown um, so I'll just skip past that uh, there's going to be quite a few decent. This is a decent card, isn't it? Um, again, uh, it's a group three. This is a small field. Uh, it's probably not much uh, kind of value, um, although value is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, Palisado, he might try and make all if he's fully wound up. Um, who knows? But I'm going to skip past that. I don't want to be here for three hours, um, and I'm sure you don't either. Uh, time. Uh, well, we got uh, Brigadier Gerard Group Three. You know, I, I'm not a big group race better personally. I know it, a lot of people like them. I like watching them. I enjoy watching a classy performance and a classy horse, and I'll enjoy watching the racing. Um, it doesn't mean I have to play in it. Um, and you know, you, it's hard enough if you think you're specialising in something um, to come out in front, as my last couple of months of punting would demonstrate. Um, so to kind of fire your arrows across a plethora of different race types um, isn't something I like to do personally, but we are all different. Um, and whatever uh, way you find enjoyment from the game, that's totally up to you. Um, 8.15, another listed race. Uh, so this card isn't much much fun oh a handicap um class three you can sense the excitement in my voice um or quite a big field one as well um so the you know the thing about Gigi's gold and why i like it so much is because there's so much information just at the click of a button right in front of you um and you can get a good feel uh for you know how the horses are doing in terms of their chance uh, if we're looking at trainer form, so I might be drawn in immediately by the two at the bottom because those two trainers are in very good form. Um, uh, and, you know, that's that really. Uh, let's click on Instant Expert so I want to see if this is competitive. Uh, oh, <laughs> and the excitement drains away. Um, yeah, that looks fairly competitive, doesn't it? The green and ambers. Uh, yeah, I was saying that, Highland Calori. 
He's 16 pounds below his last winning mark. He's one from one at the track. He's four from nine in class three. What's his place record? He's run in class three nine times and placed one or placed five. Um, uh, Jacob Black, he looks like a great chance. He's six pounds above his last winning mark, so I might have to look to see if he's progressive or if he's, you know, he's just handicapped and he can't win now. Um, Secret Art uh, looks okay, two pounds above last winning mark. Uh, if we can, may not like the track. Uh, there's a few in here that, you know, when they're greyed out boxes, it means they haven't run, so they're unproven. El Tren hasn't appeared to run on good, he hasn't run in class 3, he hasn't run at the track and he hasn't run over a mile um, so he's doing plenty of things differently uh, yeah a few here that haven't run at the track uh, Chevalier at the bottom ticks plenty of boxes um, so that's interesting I suppose from a handicapping point of view the one I'm drawn into is Highland Calori um, now he may be worth you know the other good thing when you have this approach and you're looking at it in this way um, is that you can just note down horses, I suppose, and track them. Uh, those that are well handicapped, maybe this isn't the day for Highland Calori, um, but his mark is getting su such a low point, which suggests he might have been a bit regressive, he might have lost some ability, um, but he will get to the point where he outclasses some opposition. Um, and they, you know, and Andrew Balding, um, is he still trained by Andrew Balding? Uh, yeah, uh, where Andrew Balding can um, find a race for him. Uh, you know, 16 pounds below, course and distance winner. Um, recent form, maybe not much to shout home about. Uh, well, certainly isn't. Um, but, you know, a second run after a break. He's uh, got the visor on. Um, so, you know, you start to build up a picture. Uh, we've got his draw. So let's have a look at pace. Firstly, um, Let's just get an idea of how the race is going to shape up. Uh, Jacob Black's going to be up there by the looks of things. The Tory might try and make all. Uh, Charlie Bear is up there. Um, if we can, can lead. Uh, uh, Jalawi held up, and so he won after being held up. He's also won after leading, so he's tactically versatile. Um, Highland Calori kind of can be up there chasing leaders. You know, the pace might set up for a horse just off it if there's a few of them that go at it. Um, then you've got the draw. Is there anything significant? Uh, not necessarily. You know, if you like the odds, there might not be a reason to be put off necessarily. Um, you know, medium draws have been profitable, but uh, that's just an aside. And you've got more numbers down there. You can see the actual record of the draw. Um, there's a graph here in terms of win percentages, I think, to the yeah, win percentage. You can sort these out as well um, in terms of how they perform. AE, you know, so you can see there, medium draws have done well, but then high and low have been fine as well. So, not, you know, that, that definitely looks like it's more about pace and more about the position that the horse can get um, out of the gate. Um, so 8.45 Sandan, I might have a look at that. I might have a look at Highland Calori given his handicap mark, but he doesn't look in great form. You might want to see a bit more. Uh, the market may well guide. Um, Chevalier is four years old, so handicap mark not too bothered just yet, and this is conclusively proven that he cannot win from a mark like this. Um, he's won at Sandown over the course and distance. Um, 76 uh, track leaders is low enough drawn. Um, he's one on good to firm, he's one on good to soft. Uh, this is his second run. They, you know, the trainer knows the horse like Sandown. This may have been the target. Um, uh, Kempton was probably a pipe opener, although he was 7 to 1, he ran okay. Um, that was a class 4 apprentice. Uh, you know, he might not like Sand. Uh, Ascot can be a funny track. Um, his race was 29 runs ago. That I mean, this is a good example, actually. Uh, you know, things keep coming up that I keep forgetting to discuss. Um, that's because there's quite a lot here. But once you get used to it, um, it all kind of becomes second nature. Uh, so to the kind of bottom middle right here, you have the then what feature. Um, this looks at uh, the horses that have run since from that race and how they've done. So that at Ascot Class Four Apprentice Handicap, 14 horses have since run from that. None of one, of none have placed. Um, that suggests it necessary wasn't necessarily the strongest. The same with that Kempton race. Uh, the same with this New Market race. Um, 
Now there might be one. Let's have a look. Uh, this worked out better. So now you can see here, so this race a new market in September. Um, now I can click on this and it will open in a new screen. Hopefully it might take forever to load. And I'm aware this video is already going on a bit, but there's a lot to kind of discuss and there's no point in kind of rushing through it. Hopefully um, you get an idea and you can, like I said before, you can dip in and out. Um, so you've got uh, that new market race and you can pick up the last result. You can click on it and see what they've done. You can see who's run, who's won. Did horses near the front, you know, yeah, the second, third and fourth have come out and won since. Um, you know, that's just to get an idea of the strength of the form, really. Um, and you obviously can dive into some of those horses to see if they've progressed onto better things, um, etc, etc. So that that gives an idea. Um, oh, yes, you've got, what else you've got? So, yeah, you've got the headgear here. You've got these little symbols. Uh, the TC, that's trainer change, so you can see automatically that this horse is running for a new trainer. Um, you've got handicap first, so this horse is making his handicap debut. You can, um, I'll go through the reports in a moment um, as a separate video actually, uh, just to keep this one a bit shorter. Um, uh, but uh, yes, you've got those little kind of numbers there. What else? I think I've gone through everything. So you've got horse form. You can see how they've worked out. So none of Highland Glory's recent runs have worked out very well at all. That subtle race must have been pretty dire. Um, uh, you've got the jockey form, uh, his recent form. Some people put a lot of traction on kind of jockey form um, uh, in terms of if they're winning and how confident they are and obviously how well they do at certain tracks. Uh, Highland, uh, so what am I going to say? A trainer form, bolding, oh blimey. 48 runners the last two weeks, only two of one, 22 percent of plays. They're performing 55 percent below market expectations. A pound on each of them would have lost you 38 pounds 50. Um, mm, could do better, or could be doing better, I should say. Uh, so you can do that. You can look at head-to-head -head record. So you can see uh, the horses' record against other horses in the race. Um, uh, if they've who they also have beaten, who have they lost to. Uh, again, that's just more information to help. Uh, when the time comes, uh, the, it will have the racing post comment will come up here, the spotlight comment. Um, so no need to be flipping between backwards and forwards between them. Um, you have the breeding and sales data, obviously for uh, maiden races and more unexposed horses, this can be more important. So you can see who they're related to, whether they've got speed, whether they've got stamina, uh, you know, different information there um, they have a tipping league so you can tip a horse if you want you can test yourself out against all the other users and see if you're a decent tipster um, and you can delete horses you can take them out from the race so that they don't show within all the different other uh, parts um, so that's sand down the other thing is clicking on the horse uh, hopefully this works yeah um, <laughs> so uh, this is brilliant and it's Matt and his data team have developed this over time um, the amount you can just filter now uh, now I, I don't mind admitting I use horse race space as well you know that um, and I like their profile at all and the way they use the colour coding um, which is you know, something I'll show you in another video uh, but this bit of kit just keeps getting better uh, so here you can bring up their date range first of all so last two years now I'm going to go from 2009 so that covers probably most of his runs um, now I can uh, filter so that's all of his runs on flat turf whatever I can filter to handicaps so I can see his form in handicaps I can see his form in flat handicaps um, so that's a you know so that takes out all the maiden runs and the runs on the all weather um, I can see his form in today's conditions um, which as you hover it explains it so form for all UK Ireland runs um, let me keep dragging it out T yeah under today's distance going in class so distance going in class uh, well he hasn't run in the exact conditions of today um, but I can have a look at going so zero from eight two places on good and you can see down the bottom hold on you can see those runs on good. Uh, they're all in class two. This is quite a big drop in class for him uh, today, so that might be irrelevant. Um, 
and again you can go through all these different filters the winds the place uh you know you can go you can look at some horses on the today um and they might be three from three in exactly today's conditions for example and you're thinking oh this is exciting um uh or as exciting as it gets for us sad horse racing folk <laughs> um and yeah you've got all these other graphs and uh different things i mean there's so much to explore it's quite brilliant um so that's the full form field you can go through every horse you can change the horse at the top right hand corner here um let's have a look at uh, hull coat yeah he's only three from 13 he's unexposed today's conditions what's he like in today he hasn't run in exactly uh, going class etc um you can look at the jockey uh, so that's the jockeys for the horse. So again, you can dig down into all that different date. You can look at the trainer. Uh, you can look at the sire. And that's Im interesting and important. Um, so you can look at the sire for the horse. Uh, you've got all these runs, you know, 3,011, 264. Um, so again, you can dig that by going uh, would be an interesting one. Or distance, you know, you name it, you can dive in. Uh, and it's just a brilliant amount of information. Um, so that's kind of the race cards really the card the full form filters I've just showed you all these different tabs and buttons I mean I really don't think there's anything else like it um, and I would like to see it so I will just let's just finish I would be nice to find an uncompetitive uh, race and a horse that stands out um, uh, that's a maiden hurdle no thanks and that's as I said before, some stats, novice handicap chases. I'm, uh, I'm loath to get involved in such a, such an affair. Um, but I'll click on the buttons nonetheless. Uh, slide check. You know, a lot of these will be making. Won't have had many runs over fences. They might just be not very good. Uh, you name it. Um, or oh, a three mile handicap chase. I may well look at that for tipping purposes. Um, Strumble head. Uh, zero from four at the track but he's well handicapped dreams of theatre is very well handicapped and is a course winner uh eight pounds below um john joe if you've hit any form yet yeah they're running okay not too too bad um 37 days off he's got tongue tie cheek pieces on whatever else so he's got his cheek pieces on so it'd be good to go in and have a look at his record when he's got cheek pieces on although he's absolutely tanked last time um uh so again that's that's a kind of uh oh cw would have won last time because i was watching that race if he hadn't have clouted one of the th uh, fences absolutely finished like a train um although i'm not sure how good a race that was but he is a distance winner uh Anyway, I might have a look at that race and the odds and see if there's anything uh, of standout. Um, but again, th this is the kind of initial, as I've said, the initial kind of flick through to see if there are any kind of uncompetitive. Uh, so we've got Handicap Hurdles, 4-year-old plus. Jack's Last Hope, he ticks a lot of conditions. Um, that might be in non-handicap form or... I mean, yeah, it doesn't have a last winning rating, so that needs to be looked at. Murray Mount looks interesting. Seven pounds uh, below. What else have we got? Um, you know, Sam Pietro looks interesting. Tribal Dance is on his last winning mark, and he's got class form. Um, a lot of these. So, you know, this is looking uncompetitive because you've got a lot here, or a few, that have kind of had quite a few goes in class four and don't seem to have done very much um, and if I go to class 3, class 4 uh, yeah again so there's not there's not many class winners really and I, you know, I do like class winners and obviously distance is important also um, as I've said numerous times especially in the mud if you don't stay you don't stay um, you can't fake stamina uh, especially in jumps races over kind of around 3 miles um, very hard to get away with it if you simply do not stay the trip um san pietro so san pietro is looking uh like he should have a closer uh dive into him um tribal dance 
So hopefully you see how kind of, not easy, but how horses stand out and kind of smack you in the face um, and indicate that you should have a further look at them. Um, and obviously everything is price dependent. Those two might end up going off six to four or whatever. You know, he won last time out, so he's probably not going to be much for price. Um, although he's, is he reverting from chasing to hurdling? Yeah, mm, uh, never a big fan of that. Um, Travel Dance had 40 days off. He's a 10 year old, but you know, we can have a look at that a bit more depth um, so I keep looking over my right hand shoulder as the 5 past 3 from Hamilton's on in a moment and I know some of you like Imperial Legends chance and uh, Mr Midgley has a runner as well um, so it'll be interesting to see how those two get on um, and I'll stop this video before that starts uh, flat race uh, again unless I've got some stats or whatever I'm not really fussed um, and I could look through the others uh, but hopefully you get the idea um, so that is part one of three of my approach to stats angles of interest. I'm looking for uncompetitive races at the start, um, horses that may stand out that look like they're well handicapped. I make a note of them. I'll then go back. I'll use the other tools on here. Um, I might use a bit of horse race space as well, if I'm being honest, um, to have a look and see if there's something that stands out. The next part is to go through the reports all these wonderful fantastic stats field reports um, and to see if anything else stands out and I will do that in the next video um, but I'm going to stop this one because it's been long enough and I've done my usual thing of talking forever um, but I'm not really sure I could have gone through that in much uh, much speedier really um, so I will go through those and then the third part is to use my trainer track profiles report and to look for some stats ways in uh, to see if there's anything else um, and hopefully to try and bring it all together and find one to three horses that are decent that are a decent price that may stand out that worked well the other day when um, Sinbad the Sailor winning at 9 to 1, Habri winning at 16 to 1, the 22nd, 22 to 1 second who got agonisingly beat and cost me about three grand for a ten pound each way double oh how painful um didn't really cost me uh because uh well they got a good each way return so that was fine um but it was exciting to watch um so i'm gonna next video i'll go through the, i'll whiz through the reports quickly but i'm aware that i've gone on long enough hopefully that's given you an idea and i've kind of only scratched the surface um matt will probably watch this video and as he has done before and gone you've missed this you've missed this you haven't talked about this brilliant aspect <laughs> um uh, which is probably true because he's adding so many great things to this uh, Gigi's Gold every day um, that sometimes it takes me a couple of weeks to catch up. Um, but what you've seen there is how I use uh, the reports in real life to create the stats angles of interest part of the blog. That is me, a punter like you, uh, using this brilliant piece of kit. Um, and I really don't think there's anything better out there. There's nothing like it out there. Um, and you should give it a go if you haven't done already. Um, this is where the sales part comes in. Uh, for five pounds, you can try it for two weeks. Um, there's a link below the video. Uh, you get access to all of this great stuff. You'll have a look at the reports in another video in a moment. Access to all of this great stuff. Uh, five pound for two week trial, then goes up to 24 pounds per month you may think that's too much you might think it's a bargain um, those that are a part of it absolutely love it um, and you know that is that sorry I just paused that while I watched um, Imperial Legend win the 305 uh, from Hamilton and Groundworker ran well in third um, Midgley really is coming into form and I know some of you on the blog uh, fancied Imperial Legend so well done um, Hopefully you got him at a decent price. Uh, I won't comment whether or not I followed some of you in. Um, but he was well handicapped and he's done that a shade cosily. Um, right, so yes, the link below the video. Uh, you can try out uh, Gigi's Gold for a couple of weeks for a fiver. Um, I think you'd be mad not to give that a go. Uh, and you can kind of start exploring all the other great stuff. Um, as I said, I kind of decided to record this video now because Matt's putting up the price, I think, to around £30, if not more, um, and on the 1st of June. Uh, and if you sign up before then, uh, you'll stick to the old price. Um, I believe that is for existing uh, customers. The price stays the same for whatever price you joined at. Um, so... Uh, there is a cheaper annual option as well I should say uh, but you can click the link below the video and find out more I hope on a number of different levels you've found that useful I'm aware it's been a bloody long video um, but hopefully you can watch it in bits and bobs and 
you know cut it up a bit and dip in and out uh, and that it has uh, kind of well and that you found it useful I should say um, so I will leave it there I will stop uh, talking the hind legs off a donkey um, as I've been uh, politely and humorously accused of before probably correctly um, and I will leave it there uh, so yeah uh, thanks for watching uh, and for now this is me saying goodbye <laughs>